Hey, what's going on guys? So today I'm doing uh, an unboxing. I'm actually out on the road. I'm at a different location here. If you notice the table's different. Um, but I did bring this Yabo uh, to do. I flipped it upside down because the sender's information's on the bottom. Well, the top of it, I suppose. <laughs> We're looking at the bottom, so I'm going to be opening this upside down. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, it does say Yabo on the top of the box there. Using our trusty CRKT katana. Open this guy up here. Okay. So. Oh. Alright, hang on. <laughs> I might have to not do this upside down because it looks like everything's in a bag. Yep. Okay. Things are usually packaged for a reason. A certain way. Alright, so everything's in there. And then the note, which was on top, was on the bottom. Okay, it says, read note on camera. Alright. So, sorry about the, the way the lighting is in here. Obviously, it's casting a shadow where the uh, camera is, but hopefully you guys can see this. It says, hello Jeff, or hey Jeff, uh, hope you like the little selection of knives I picked out for you, uh, for your Yabo series, including a neck knife, knowing how much you like those. Ooh, I do love my neck knife. Look at this. I'm going to use it to open the package today. Uh, also included a buck knife, a Kershaw knife, a steel warrior buoy, uh, a few gas station knives, and a couple vintage slip joints. There's also a medieval surprise included as well. Oh, that's very intriguing. <laughs> you uh, truly were an inspiration to my getting into the knife collecting hobby. Uh, as I look to slim down my collection a little, I thought these would make uh, nice little gifts to show my appreciation for your inspiring me and all you do for the knife community. Thank you and take care from Mario. That was really awesome, Mario. I really do appreciate it. So, how do we attack this? Put some of this tape. Knife. Only is in a bag, nice and neat. Let's do it this way, slice down. Okay. Wow. Wow, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Whoa. Okay. Four different bundles. Where do we start? All right, let's start with the big to small. We'll do this. Okay. Wow, that's intriguing. Look at this. Cumbum Monastery. Cumbum? <laughs> it almost sounds like a joke. All right, I have to zoom in so you guys know I'm not making that up. There you go, Cumbum Monastery. Is that a real place? You guys tell me. Uh, pretty cool. See, you know, like these, these are basically wall hangers. I mean, I'm not gonna take this out and, you know, process wood with or anything, but I have to say, they're still always cool to me. Still like stuff like this. So nice decorative. Oh, we got a pocket clip on the back. A decorative hanger. Is actually attached. Let's see. All right. So this is attached on the other side. I thought maybe it would clip the other side here, but anyway, looks like there's a little button release. All right. So when this is in, yeah, it kind of clicks in. Whoop! Am I even <laughs> doing that on camera? There we go. Let me, let me push this down a little bit. All right. To so the edge of the table. There we go. So now at least it's focused right there. All right. So. Push this little button in to release it. And there you go. So we have like a dragon on the blade. Pretty cool. So back say stainless china. Pretty neat. All right, so we'll put that back in its box for now. Put this on top. Put that off the side. Let me put my neck knife away as well. Okay. So next, this says outdoor knife. 
Looks like uh, kind of a K-Bar type copy. It was kind of interesting. Plastic handle. Hmm. It's got kind of a cool, kind of a, let's say woodland camo pattern on it, but is this magnetic on the bottom? It's like a nice, well, it's plastic. <laughs> it looks like a nice metal uh, pommel on there. Believe it or not, it's actually pretty comfortable. This is, again, one of those knives that would look better on the wall than probably put in use. But uh, every knife has a purpose. I always say that to people. Every knife has a purpose. All right. Put that guy off the side. Okay. So, do I open this big old pack? Yeah, let's do this first. Let me see, where's the seam here? Take my neck knife back out. Put that plastic, the tape. unroll this and see the, uh, the whole pile of goodies. All right, a bunch of stuff in here. So this first thing here is a little hatchet. It's got a cool orange camo handle on there. Let's see, it says user and bystander wear safety goggles. China, thank you China for <laughs> the warning on the side there. Use some safety goggles. Looking out for us Americans eyes, I guess. So th thanks for that. All right, so how does this guy, is this a button? Button snaps? Hmm. There's a button on the bottom, there we go, okay. Are they all button snaps? No, just the bottom. It's pretty cool. There's a little gut hook, a couple ratchet or um, wrench uh, cutouts there. Yeah. Kind of fun. I don't know how well it would do chopping wood, but Still a fun little uh, design. And just snap those back, and there you go. So interesting little hatchet. Put that off to the side there. Where do we go next? Uh, I gotta just check this guy out. So this looks like looks like it is stacked leather for the handle here. All right. It's a good looking knife. This is a steel warrior. All right, so this is a steel warrior buoy. He was talking about. I have to say, Steel Warrior is not all that bad. So, if you're not familiar, back in the day, I would say late '90s, probably more early 2000s, um, Frost Cutlery. So Jim Frost, you know, R.I.P. He's gone now, but he had many, many, many different brands. Frost Cutlery being, you know, one of the original uh, brands. But Steel Warrior was part of one of his companies or one of his sub brands. But the Steel Warrior stuff, especially the slip joints, were actually really good quality, especially for the price. You get like you know, $8 to $15 slip joints, and they worked. You know what I mean? They weren't total pieces of crap. They, they actually worked pretty well. Um, the seams, yeah, I mean, it's got a sharp blade on it. Uh, this is something, like, unlike this, like, I, I would chop wood with this before I would try to use something like this. I'm sure this would work okay, but you can see the, uh, the pins in here. These two, actually, they're screws, so it's removable. But that's, that's where this ends. I, I can almost guarantee this is not full tang at all. The, the metal probably stops right about there. You know, so I'd worry a little bit with the force of chopping that this might crack or break and then create a dangerous situation. But something like this, even though it's a, it's a 440 stainless, or excuse me, yeah, 440. So you don't know if it's 440A or 440C, or it could be 440B, although that's not very often used on knives. Uh, but there is a difference between 440A and 440C. So it says 400 series, you know, they're not specifying that it's probably 440A, which is a softer steel. However, it's a very usable knife is what I'm saying. You just might have to maintain that edge a little bit more, but it feels good. It looks good. I mean, who doesn't like a, a shiny Bowie knife, right? It is uh, genuine stack leather, it looks like, uh, and it does have a kind of hammer pommel. So that is, you know, solid stainless steel there. And that would work. I mean, if you need a self-defense knife for the zombie apocalypse, you can definitely crack some soft uh, zombie heads with that pommel, you know, so it's actually pretty cool. So I do like this one quite a bit. So put that back in its uh, little sheath here. All right, let's see, uh, let's see what else we have going on. Get that button snap on there. 
Whoop. I have to get the button snap on. <laughs> I have to do it behind the... I have the, a different tripod here too, which uh, makes everything a lot harder because I have to reach, like it's way bigger, so I have to really reach around. But that is cool. All right, so let's put that aside. All right, so what's this guy? This looks like the, the neck knife. All right, does have a pocket clip option. It's interesting. All right, so this just says China. We have a chisel ground blade, so it's sharpened on one side here. And there's a Phillips head screw right in the middle. And that looks like maybe that's what's retaining this in the sheath. It's just that, that screw head in that little bulbous part. Yeah, that's what's actually keeping the sheath, otherwise it would fall out. That's pretty cool, though. All right, a little, uh, little Tanto, the power cord wrap. All right, put that off to the uh, side here. All right, so we have Kershaw and a Buck. So let's check out this Kershaw first here. Wow, I was definitely not expecting that. Um, wow, okay, so this is a model 1894. Um, it's an 8CR13 MOV, and you can see the only part that's actually sharpened is what, what looks like the back of the blade. Um, very interesting tool, for sure. So I'm not sure, this definitely seems like it's task specific, and I'm going to have to look this up in a second here. In fact, I'm going to look it up right now. So this is the 1894, I have not seen this Kershaw before. So let me grab my phone real quick, go on the internets, and check this out. Kershaw 1894, it's called the Lone Rock Zip It Pro Skinner. All right, glass fill nylon uh, handles, 3.375 inches. Um, wow, that's super affordable. That's a $10 knife on uh, Knife Center. So if this is interesting, definitely worth checking out. They have them in stock. Uh, let's read here. All right, Hunter's got to get it. Because Pete Kershaw was an avid hunter, Kershaw knives uh, made great hunting knives from the beginning of their existence. 40 years later, they're still making great hunting knives, and this Lone Rock series is a testament to that. Plus, they are priced uh, like it was four years ago. That's definitely true. Try to find any knife for $10, especially with the name brand on it. So, all right, so here's the specs on it. All right, these are made in China. I'm going to let that camera focus here for a second. 3.8 ounces, overall length 8.9 inches. Again, it's an 8 CR13 MOV uh, blade. Uh, and it's 3.375 inches long, that blade. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So it is a dedicated um, skinning blade. Interesting, very interesting. So obviously, if you're, if you're not a hunter, which I'm not a hunter, but I happen to know, um, it looks like it's you know on the wrong side, like the knife is shaped as if you're cutting like this, but you're not. You're actually using this kind of reverse grip. Very, very cool though. This is gonna stay in the collection just because it's it's unique and I love unique knives. All right. Very cool. All right, let's put that off to the side. Get rid of this bubble wrap and see what this buck knife is. Okay. Little folder. Oh, cla totally classic buck. This is awesome. This actually gets some pocket time tomorrow. So this looks like a, uh, a buck light. Looks like it's in fantastic condition. This is just, this is a really, really nice knife. Um, let me find out, it is the 110, but I'm not sure what they're calling it. I wanna say it's just the, the light. All right, so we have like kind of a Zytel handles here instead of the classic wood and brass. Um, nice, strong lockup on that. All right, you can hear how that snaps. It's kind of interesting how this, uh, it's almost like crimped on the back. Let me show you this. Where the lockup is. All right, see how these two pieces meet together? Interesting. And there's, the, of course, the marking 110, USA, nothing on the back. So let's look this up real quick. All right, you hop online. Let's see, we're on Knife Center, so I'll check it out here. Buck 110, light. See what comes up here. Nope, that's a <laughs> the Buck 110 light is literally a little keychain light with the uh, logo there. All right, so let me go back to Google here. The Buck Knives 110 Folding Hunter LT. So they're saying LT for lightweight. Is this the same knife? Yes, it is. All right, so this is on Buck's main website here. 
get rid of that ad. Show retail is $33.99, and I'll go to one of the dealers in a second here, but I guarantee it's going to be a little bit cheaper uh, than that. But we can see this is the same knife here. So, yeah, the 110 Folding Hunter. Very cool. So this is in 420HC, and Buck does do 420HC very nicely, whereas 420HC or high carbon uh, from a, a couple other companies out there, I'd probably pass it up. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but for some reason, Buck just does an awesome heat treat. Uh, obviously, Tony Bowes has done heat treats for their stuff for years, but they know how to do it. So, let's see. Knife made in the USA, which is always a bonus for all you people out there always focused on American-made knives. There's a great one right there at a very affordable price. Made in the USA, 3.2 ounces, 3 and 3 quarter inch blade, um, and clip point. So very, very cool. So let's get a closer look at this guy. Very, very cool. So like I said, this one will definitely get some pocket. I mean, it feels like nothing. It really is lightweight. It's lightweight compared to most uh, folders to begin with. Uh, but throw on the fact, you know, that anyone who's used to a Buck 110, a traditional Buck 110, Again, with the brass handles and the wood scales, it, it's very heavy in the pocket. So this almost feels like a toy, uh, but it is not a toy. And this one still seems like it is very sharp, which is very cool. All right, so we will put that one to the side. Awesome. Okay. So, and we still have more to go. So let's go this one. Let's see, we'll pack it. We'll pack it of goodness. Okay, be careful. Get rid of all this bubble wrap. Okay, so we have these are like little cheap folders, but they're kind of fun. This one says uh, Duck Hunter. In fact, this is Frost Cutlery. I was just talking about Jim Frost and Frost Cutlery stuff. All right, you can see the logo. Let me get in a little closer for you. It looks like the glare calms down a bit. It's a shiny blade there. Come on, camera. There we go. Okay. I pushed my luck. Let's let that focus. There we go. Frost cutlery. A little uh, hawk or eagle. So that one's duck hunter. Very neat. Then we have bass fishing, which I did not do a lot of this year. I have to say I'm kind of ashamed of that, but uh, definitely going to get on it next year with the fishing. You know what it was? It was just uh, scheduling. That's all. One thing after another. I had a couple fishing trips uh, planned and they just went south. And then this one is deer hunter. So duck hunter, deer hunter, and bass fishing. These are actually kind of cool. Even though these are cheap little knives, again, they all have a place. This one actually locks up really nice, which uh, is not something often happens with, uh, you know, frost cutlery. But yeah, they, I mean, they have a place. You throw this in the tackle box or, you know, junk drawer or whatever. You need a knife real quick. It works. It's going to cut stuff. In fact, we'll use, uh, we'll use our deer hunter here to cut open our next package in a minute. But we have two more to look at. Here's a little slip joint. What's this one from? Let's see. The tip is broken off. Looks like maybe an old trade. Beautiful wood scales, though. That's very familiar. You know, some of you guys out there will probably be able to name this wood, but it looks very familiar. So we have a main blade here. <laughs> Not on camera again. Let's back this up a little. All right, so main blade, and then looks like a little pen blade. The pen blade is actually pretty sharp. Let's go ahead and let me look in person. Yeah, the markings on here, it's, it's kind of old and dirty. But give me a second. Let me see if I can... Wipe off the bottom, get an idea of what this says. Darn, I need my rust eraser, which I don't have here. I can knock that off real quick and, and be able to see that, that marking on the blade. All right, hang on, let me pop the other blade out, see if there's anything on that. Oh, it might be a little legible on the other side. Hmm. All right, H, H U L L. H U L L I N G maybe. Hmm. I'm gonna show you in a second here. Hang on. I don't know if there's something before the H. Is that a T? Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth. I don't know. Let's see. 
This is where I have to reference all my knife books. Let me get in a little closer. See if I get this guy to focus. Come on, camera. Work with me here. Work with me. Focus. All right, let's back out a little. Well, first let me put my hand behind here. Back out. Try this again. How close can I get before it gets blurry? Up, oh, right there, I guess. All right, so right there. That's what it's looking like to me. Hollingsworth? Hmm. Interesting. Again, if I break out some of my old, like, Bernard Levine, you know, books, knife books, um, I could probably find out who this is. It's fascinating, though. Here's the uh, marking on the, the main blade. It's not any better, but... I don't know if I get the light right to show you that, but it's the same marking. Just a little dirtier over there, so it's kind of easier to see it on this one. And look at that wood, though. What kind of wood is this? I know you guys know. I do love a nice wood handle, but I do not remember all the different types. So, yeah. The, uh, the blade is, the main blade is broken on top, as you saw there. However, I can reprofile that. So this is a, a neat little knife, and I'll probably do that as a separate little project. I'll reprofile it to something, and, and I'll use it. All right, so what do we have here? Unfortunately, there's part of the scale missing on the front here. Although this does look like a nice little knife here. Oh. <laughs> you hear those cats? Jeez. That's outside. Everyone's asleep. It's like 2 in the morning right now. <laughs> when I'm making this video. But yeah, there's some cats outside making some noises. Alright, so I don't know if that was a blade. I mean, it is a blade. I don't know if originally it was a blade, but it was certainly sharpened into one. And we're going to look at that closer in a second here. And this blade is a thick boy. Wow, that is a really thick stock to it. And it looks like... I don't know if this is chipped or originally this had some kind of a... Um, you know, toothpick type dealio, but... All right, so let me look in person for a second, see if I can read any of this. So the third line, there's three lines, three different words. The very bottom line does look like Winchester to me. But again, I have to use my other books for reference. And it's also two in the morning, so my brain's not working as well as it should. I may remember what this could be. But yeah, that's it. It's got the same marking on the main blade too. But it's fascinating. Um, how thick this is. This, uh, not this, this is a tiny little needle blade, but uh, this other blade here is quite thick. I'm not sure if this is originally a blade or if they made, it. Uh, I guess maybe it was. It's sharpened down, I mean, these, these are fairly sharp. But, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Definitely, definitely wobbly. Definitely needs some, some little bit of love there, but no doubt a uh, cool knife. All right, so let's put these two guys aside. Actually get our, our duck hunter and our fishing, bass fishing knife, put that to the side. And we use our little deer hunter, open this last pack. Let's see. You see that? $5 knife, cutting stuff. Might be watching this with a $300 knife in your pocket. The $5 ones still work. <laughs> Just saying. Um, no shame in having a, a cheap knife as long as you keep it sharp. I've always said that. You don't have to spend a bunch of money to enjoy a knife. Alright. A lot of tape on this bad boy. Oh, that's just peeled off. Okay. You did good, Deer Hunter. You did good. Okay. So what do we have here? We have two, these look like the same. Two folders. All right, so these look like the same. Oh, they're kind of rubbery. Um, two different versions of the same knife, basically. The camo is slightly different. But yeah, it's fascinating. So, let's grab one. See, is this uh, assisted? No, it's not. It says uh, cut master. All right, that's fairly comfortable. We have a uh, kind of a lean tanto there. 
And then obviously there's like an insert on here. I'm not sure why there's a bar. What is that for? Ooh, that's interesting. Is that, it's not the pocket clip because there's the pocket clip. All right, so we have a gut hook and the gut hook has a separate like razor insert. And then there's also a glass breaker on the back. So the shutter blade, it's a liner lock. But what is this wire thing? Hmm, it looks like a placeholder for uh, a wedding. <laughs> but I, I'm gonna go out on the limb and say that's not what it's for. You know, you put the little card there, it says Jeffrey. So you know where to sit and have your chicken or steak. So yeah, this one has the same thing. Wow, that's gonna really mess me up. Cause now, like I said, it's two in the morning. I don't wanna, I don't wanna spend time Googling this. I'll probably do it tomorrow, but this certainly has my fascination. So when I'm done with this video and uh, I go to bed, I'll be laying down just thinking about this because right now it's boggling my mind what this could be. What is this for? I have no idea, but it's definitely supposed to be here. Tucks all the way. Just enough so you can, you know, pull a little, little side of it out. Wow. All right, what did I say it was? Cut master? All right, we're going to have to look this up. <laughs> it's late and I'm tired, but I got to know. Okay. So I found the thing. This is like a good five minutes later. Cut master Moonshine Wildfire Rescue Knife. It's model M1834CP. All right, the... Uh, Manufacturer suggested warranty is $59.99. It, it's on Deal Yard. I don't know this random website. Um, I don't know if they're, they're selling for $10. So, so that's that's a deal. All right, so I don't care about that. All right, item description. Features unique wildfire camo handle with 420 stainless steel black oxide coated blade. Knife measures four clothes with a, a 3.2 tanto piercing blade. End of knife offers a razor sharp seatbelt cutter with window knockout tool. Fold away wire shackle clip. Wire shackle clip. And belt clip offers choice for carrying. Wait, I mean, I'm not reading this in the proper order because I'm tired. All right, foldable, comma, wire shackle clip and belt clip offers choice for carrying in one's pocket or snap clip. Okay, so they're saying that this is a different way to just clip into something. So you can use the belt clip, right? Our normal pocket clip that we're all used to, call it belt clip, right? Or perhaps they're just suggesting that you can loop this on something, maybe. Wire shackle clip. So thanks to everyone out there. I really do appreciate you and I'm glad you enjoyed these videos. So with that, I bid you a good night and that's exactly what I'm gonna do, going to bed. So I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.